Hello everyone. Today we will gain some basic knowledge on Partnership Act through some basic MCQs. So without wasting any time, let's start with it. The first question is, for constituting a partnership within the meaning of the Section 4 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932, which of the following should be there? Options are A. The business has to be of a permanent nature. B. The business can be of temporary nature. C. It is immaterial as to whether the business is of temporary or permanent nature. D. Only A and not B. The correct answer to this question is option C. That is, it is immaterial as to whether the business is of temporary or permanent nature. The next question is, the principles governing part partners' mutual relation have been laid down in which of the following chapters? Options are A. Chapter 2 of Indian Partnership Act B. Chapter 3 of Indian Partnership Act Chapter C. Chapter 4 of Indian Partnership Act or D. Chapter 5 of Indian Partnership Act The correct answer to this question is Option C. That is, the Chapter 4 of the Indian Partnership Act governs the principle of partners mutual relation between each other. Next question is The general duties of partners have been laid down in which of the following sections? Options are A. Section 9 of the Act B. Section 10 of the Act C. Section 11 of the Act or D. Section 13 of the Act The correct answer to this question is Option C, that is, Section 11 of the Indian Partnership Act lays down the general duties of a partners. The next question is, under Section 9 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932, in doing best for the common body, A. A partner is regarded as a kind of trustee for the other partners. B. A partner is liable to render the accounts to other partners in Fiduciary capacity C. Both A and B are correct or D. Neither A nor B is correct. The correct answer to this question is option A. C. That is both A and B are correct. Which means that a partner is regarded as kind of trusty for the other partners as well as a partner is liable to render the accounts to the other partners in fiduciary capacity. The next question is under Section 10 of the Indian Partnership Act, every partner is under a duty to which of the following? Options are A. To indemnify the firm for any loss caused to it by his fraud in the conduct of the business of the firm. To render true accounts and full information of everything. C. Not to carry on any business other than that of a firm. Or D. To be just and faithful to each other. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, under Section 10 of the Indian Partnership Act, every partner is under the duty to render true accounts and disclose full information of everything to each, everyone. The next question is, the rights and the duties of the partners inter se can be regulated and can be varied by the consent of the partners by the virtue of which of the following sections? Options are, a. Section 14 of the Act B. Section 13 of the Act C. Section 12 of the Act or D. Section 11 of the Act The correct answer to this question is Option B. That is Section 13 of the Act The next question is Under Section 11 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 In case of any conflict between the provision of the Act and the Articles of the Agreement The Articles of the Agreement with it will be A. Valid B. Invalid C. Voidable at the instance of any partner D. Voidable at the instance of a third party The correct answer to this question is Option B. That is The articles of the agreement the, will be invalid The next question is An agreement in restraint of a trade in partnership under section 11 of the Act is a. Valid B. Voidable C. Void or D. Invalid The correct answer to this question is option C. That is, 
an agreement and restraint of trade in a partnership under section 11 of the act is void per se the next question is section 12 of the indian partnership act 1932 talks about options are a a statement of rights of the partners in reference to the conduct of business b a statement of duties of partners in conduct of the business c a mixed statement of rights and duties of partners in reference to the conduct of the business or d neither a nor b the correct answer to this question is section 12 of the indian partnership act talks about a statement of rights of the partners in reference to the conduct of the business the next question is section 12 clause c of the indian partnership act provides for options are a rule of majority b rule of unanimity c both a and b or d only a and not b the correct answer to this question is option a that is section 12 clause c of the indian partnership act provides for the rule of majority the next question is the rule of majority contained in section 12 clause c of the indian partnership act 1932 is applicable in which of the following options are a trivial matters b ordinary matters c fundamental matters or d all of the above the correct answer to this question is option d that is the rule of majority is applicable to all of the above that is trivial matters ordinary matters and fundamental matters of the company the next question is for a banking business the maximum number of partners in partnership under section 11 of the indian companies act 1956 can be options are a 10 b 15 c 20 or d 25 the correct answer to this question is option a that is the maximum number of partners in a partnership under section 11 of the indian companies act 1956 can be only 10 members the next question is a partnership in which a number of partner exceeds that all the owed under section 11 of the indian companies act shall be which of the following options are a valid b voidable at the instance of any partner c voidable at the instance of the third party or d illegal the correct answer to this question is option d that is a partnership in which number of partners exceed that the all owned under section 11 will be illegal the next question is an illegal partnership can be options are a can sue b can be sued c cannot be sued or d can sue and be sued the correct answer to this question is option b that is an illegal partnership can be sued for its any of the legal matters next question is the member of an illegal partnership the options are a have a remedy against each other for a partnership dealing in transactions b have no remedy against each other for the partnership dealing in transactions c have a remedy against each other for the partnership dealing in transactions only with the permission of the court or d either a or c the correct answer to this question is option b that is the members of the illegal partnership have no remedy against each other for the partnership dealings and transactions if a partner is equally divided on issue the rule is in re comcini per trust condition prohibitus which means options are a those who forbid a change must have their way b those who did not forbid that is in favor of the change must have their way c the discussion on the issue be deferred for another day or d opinion on the issue be taken from an expert the correct answer to this question is option a that is the maxim means that those who forbid a change must have their way the next question is a partner has the right to have access to all the books of accounts and other things of a firm fill in the blanks the options are a during the subsistence of the partnership b during the proceedings of the dissolution of the firm c after the dissolution of the firm 
or D, all of the above? The correct answer to this question is option D. That is, a partner has a right to access the books of accounts on all of the above matter. That is, during a subsistence of partnership, during the proceeding of the dissolution of the firm, and after the dissolution of the firm. Next question is, a partner has a right to examine the account books, etc. of a firm by options are A. By himself, B. Through legal representative, C. Through agent, or D. Either A or B or C. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, through his legal representative, a partner can examine the books of accounts of the firm. The next question is, a partner can examine the books etc. of a partnership firm by options are as many number of times without any restriction, B once a year, C once a month or D once a week. The correct answer to this question is option B that is in once a year a partner can examine the books of accounts of a partnership firm. The next question is, the section 13 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 is, options are A, a mixed statement of rights and duties of the partners, B, a mixed statement of duties and liabilities of a partner, C, a mixed statement of rights and liabilities of a partner, and D, a mixed statement of rights, duties and liabilities of the partner. The correct answer to this question is, that section 13 of the Indian Partnership Act 1932 is, a mixed statement of rights, duties and liabilities of the partner. The last question is the rate of interest prescribed under section 13 where a partner advances the money beyond the amount of capital for the business of the partnership is options are A 6%, B 9%, C 12% or D 15%. The correct answer to this question is option A that is the rate of interest is 6%.